next year comes up for a vote on the Senate floor tomorrow night. The House is scheduled to take up the budget Tuesday, leaving Wednesday and Thursday to wrap up any remaining action. Lawmakers have targeted Thursday as the final day of the 1984 general session. Other major legislation up for consideration is a bill to reform the state's court system. It passed last week in the House with amendments and is likely to go to a conference committee to iron out differences in the House and Senate versions. The bill is designed to create 30 uniform judicial districts in which criminal and chancery court judges would have concurrent trial court jurisdiction. There will be 76 Tennessee delegates at the Democratic National Convention in San Francisco this summer, and 11 of them will be officially uncommitted. The state's executive committee made the final selections yesterday. Also chosen were six committed party and elected officials and 15 at-large committed delegates. Senator George McGovern wants to see a Mondale Hart ticket come from the National Convention. McGovern, interviewed on This Week with David Brinkley, admits bickering between the two leading candidates has caused some bitterness. But he says their differences can be resolved. Uh, nothing has been said that would prevent Gary Hart and Walter Mondale from joining hands on that dais in uh, San Francisco next July. And I think they'll do that. That's the ticket I would like to see. I think that uh, if, in fact, this bitterness and animosity is as deep as some people believe it is, the quickest way to heal that in the public mind and actually is to put these two men on the ticket together. I'd love to see a Mondale Hart ticket, and I think it's doable. Mondale refused to say whether he would run on a ticket with Gary Hart, but he does feel that they can overcome their differences. The problem in the Persian Gulf should be handled by Arab states in that region, according to Walter Mondale. The Iran-Iraq war has recently escalated to the point where both countries are attacking oil tankers in the Gulf. Mondale feels that the United States should exhaust every diplomatic effort be before considering military intervention. He says if the U.S. sends its forces into the area, it would also bring the Soviet Union in. I think what counts right now is to work with our allies to press both Iran and Iraq to stop. That's the best way to proceed. To get the Arab nations to use their clout in the region. After all, the Saudis are bankrolling the Iraqis to well, stop this. That's precisely and what President Reagan is doing. Some of that they are doing, but keep that up. In other words, the last thing we ought to do right now is to entertain the notion of a massive American force moving in there to keep those sea lanes open. We ought to make it clear that we insist on that. But this is a time for de very delicate uh, diplomatic and other arrangements. The Arab League is taking a stand on the Gulf War between Iran and Iraq, but so far no military action has been called for. Their meeting comes in the wake of the sinking of more oil freighters in the region. The 21-Nation League conference is being held in North Africa this weekend. Saudi Arabia issued its strongest denouncement of Iran, saying that country is becoming extremely flagrant and dangerously aggressive. Saudi Arabia also made a point of not openly endorsing Iraqi air raids within Iranian waters. Meanwhile, the counter threats continue today with an Iraqi-controlled newspaper predicting more attacks against ships headed for Iran, and an Iranian newspaper implied it would take only a few days for Iranian jets to destroy Saudi and Kuwaiti oil installations. Still to come, a calculating competition in Washington and an in-depth report on acid rain in the Mid-South. Stay with us. Thatch can choke a lawn. You can remove thatch by messing up your lawn with a power rake or messing up your back. Or you can use the self-propelled snapper high vac with the economical thatcherizer attachment. The result? A beautiful revitalized lawn. And you come out in great shape too. Snapper, discover the difference. See these local dealers about Snapper's sensational spring savings promotion. Are you paying for a luxury car but not driving one? Well, tell the competition to stand back. Hundreds of 1984 DeVilles are arriving in the Mid-South, and there's a great deal on every one. It's the largest shipment this year, the best selection this year. It's a buyer's market. Cadillac DeVille. After this year, the DeVille will be resized. So if you're ready for a full-size car where luxury is standard equipment, see your Mid-South Cadillac dealer today. It's the last year for the full-size DeVille. And remember, when they're gone, they're gone. I love a mental challenge. So when I got the kids McDonald's Happy Pails, I had to list every use. Are they versatile? 
colorful, sturdy plastic with shovel handle and lid. Kids can carry toys, start collections, play games. 724 uses total. Each Happy Pail features Ronald McDonald, Sam the Olympic Eagle, and different Summer Olympic sports. You get one when you buy a Happy Meal. Regular hamburger, fries, and soft drink at McDonald's. We're going to go play in the sand. Sand? Why didn't I think of that? Six lives depend on an egghead, an amateur, a cub scout, Ken Berry. I'm Barnell Murphy. Jim Hutton, Trini Lopez, Cameron Mitchell, Warren Oates. The enemy does have certain advantages. He has superior numerical strength. We're braver. God is on our side. You're one of those nice, soft guys that gets everybody killed. The Reluctant Hero. It was a test of wits and timing in Washington, D.C. Recent, recently, and, a, and despite tough competition, Tennessee's team of four teenagers finished 12th at the National Math Competition. Tempe Reinhardt has more. Here they come for the last round of adding and subtracting, dividing and multiplying, and determining the right angle. Approximately 207th and 8th grade math whizzes racked their brains Saturday to compete in math count, the first national math tournament held in Washington, D.C. Eric Bayan of Memphis thinks he and his teammates' all-expenses-paid trip to Washington to test wits is fun. First of all, we got to come up here to Washington from Memphis, and that was certainly fun. And also because... Um, in preparing for this test and in the test itself, we did many problems that um, were fun because they were challenging. About 16,000 junior high school students competed in regional and state tournaments in order to make it to Washington as finalists. Tennessee team coach Debbie Davis thinks tournaments like Math Count will spark students to have a greater interest in math. I think this contest is perhaps the, mo the single most outstanding contest that's held for middle school children. They, it has generated a great deal of interest on the local level and on the state level. Whiz kids here say math really is challenging, exciting, and important for the nation's future. They hope competitions like this will inspire other youngsters to realize math counts. Tempe Reichart, Channel 13 Eyewitness News, Washington. Acid rain is something most people have heard of but don't know very much about. As Alan News reports, many scientists are in the same boat. A thunder shower brings rain, and for living things, the water means life. The lightning also turns nitrogen in the air into acid. Man can also produce acid in the air. Factories and power plants generate sulfuric acid, which comes to earth miles from where the coal is burned. Automobile exhausts produce nitric acid, and people are beginning to notice some disturbing effects. There are lakes in upstate New York and Canada which contain no life. Some blame acid rain. In parts of the Appalachian mountain chain, from Tennessee to Maine, forest growth has slowed in recent years. Some trees are dying. No one knows why. At the present time, it's quite evident that our damage is coming out through the smokestacks, it's coming out through the tailpipes, and we better start doing something about that. Mike Pritchard works for the Tennessee Conservation Department. He says acid rain damage is just outside his office, the old customs house at 8th and Broadway. The stone here is, is just deteriorating away. It's, this is normally a very endearing material. Not everyone that's, blames that's damage like stuff. this on acid rain. Mac concedes it may only be part of the cause. But man's industry and engines are adding to the acid in the air. Look at sulfuric acid alone. It comes from smokestacks. Most of our country east of the Mississippi River gets a big enough dose to threaten moderately sensitive wildlife. Our rainfall is about as acidic as we oftentimes find in the northeastern United States. Bill Parkhurst has studied air pollution for the Tennessee Valley Authority for nine years. During that time, the agency has spent about a billion dollars on acid rain control. But his latest report finds little change. Parkhurst thinks natural sources may account for a lot of it. The Canadian government is very worried. In Ottawa last month, it sponsored the first acid rain conference in North America and shared its studies with eight European nations. Forest growth in large areas of eastern and northeastern United States have decreased in the 1960s for unexplained reasons. The Canadians and the Europeans pledged voluntarily to reduce acid rain. But the U.S. did not. 
In fact, the U.S. did not participate in the conference. An observer from an American environmental group was disappointed. What we have is a political decision not to take action at this point. No one really has absolute uh, ironclad proof of what's happening with acid rain right now. It's, it's uh, a little, uh, as they say, too early to have all of the facts in, but by the time they're all in, I think it'll be too late. Alan Muse for Channel 13 Eyewitness News. When we return, Beverly Moore will be here to tell us how long the rain in this area is going to stay around. Stay with us. Combination skin? What do I use? A dry skin lotion for my cheeks, a cleanser for my oily nose, an antiseptic, or all three? Get Cuticura instead. It's the Wonder Bar that works wonders on combination skin. Inside each Cuticura bar, rich emollients to help soften dry patches, cleansers to lift out excess oil, and a bacteria fighter for all over skin protection. I've never seen your skin so soft and beautiful. Cuticura, the Wonder Bar, works wonders on combination skin. A small Kubota tractor can do a lot of work. A mid-sized Kubota can take on even more chores. And a big Kubota is a powerful workhorse in any field. There are Kubota diesel tractors from 10 to 76 horsepower. There's more than one way to put a Kubota to work. See your dealer and find out why owners say, My Kubota, there's nothing like it on Earth. The largest Kubota inventory in the Mid-South. Mid-South Kubota sales, West Memphis. A trip for two to Jamaica simply by test driving a new 84 Chrysler or Plymouth at Liberty Chrysler Plymouth. Liberty Chrysler Plymouth, one of the largest Chrysler dealerships in the country, offers a complete lineup of 84 Chryslers and Plymouths, including the luxurious Fifth Avenue New Yorker, the popular LeBaron, and the Hardy Voyager. Brian Teglin inviting you to test drive a new 84 Chrysler or Plymouth and register to win a trip to Jamaica courtesy of WLVS and Liberty Chrysler Plymouth, 2580 Mount Moriah. Uh, Mr. Guthrie, where to today? Any place. Any place? I can sell anything anywhere. Oh, how about a brand new city? Well, uh, try me. We're flying to Chicago now. Ooh. We've got four new non-stops every day. I've got contacts there. That's great. And in Chicago, we've got connections to get you almost anywhere. Shirley, you've just made a sale. You're not just flying. Now you're flying to Chicago. Four brand new non-stops every day. You're flying the friendly sky. Look out, Chicago. Here comes Frank Guthrie. Well, Beverly had predicted rain in our forecast for today. We had some showers. It wasn't too bad. Yes, as a matter of fact, our forecast is much improved over last night. Great. Right now, under cloudy skies, we've got a temperature of 71 degrees. The winds are out of the south, and that's what's making our temperature so warm. Seven miles per hour. Humidity is high at 87 percent. The barometer is rising from 29.77 inches of mercury. And the river stage right now is at 38.6. That's down one-tenth of a foot. And it has already crested, so it will be continuing to drop throughout the week and, we'll, week, and we'll keep you posted on that. Our high today was 77 degrees. That occurred at 12 o'clock noon. Overnight low, 69 degrees. Sunrise tomorrow morning will be at 5.52 with sunset one minute after 8 o'clock. As far as rain is concerned, the National Weather Service has recorded a third of an inch of rain out there, whereas at Channel 13 here we've only gotten 23 one hundredths of an inch of rain. Well, temperatures around the Mid-South area at 10 o'clock are rather warm with 70 degrees in Martin, Tennessee, 71 is the temperature right now in Jackson, Tennessee, 75 degrees is the warm spot right now in Charleston, Mississippi, with 70 degrees the temperature in Hardy, Arkansas. Some other precipitation around, some amounts around the Mid-South show almost a third of an inch in Cape Girardeau, Missouri, a little over a third of an inch down here in Columbus, Mississippi, and 16 one hundred of an inch back here in Little Rock, Arkansas. At 10 o'clock, the National Weather Service radar is still picking up some rain and thunder showers in northeastern Arkansas, west Tennessee, and a little bit down here in northern Mississippi, but these are moving very slowly to the north at 10 miles per hour. National uh, radar uh, confirms our report and shows that our rain is actually part of a whole system of rain, a line of thunder showers all to our north, and down here in eastern Texas and southwestern Louisiana, they are having some severe weather with thunder showers and thunderstorms down there. On our satellite map, you'll see that the rain that we're having, that whole line of it, is actually ahead of a stationary front. It's really a cool front, but it's moving so slowly that we're calling it a stationary front. What's going to happen with this is Monday night, tonight, tomorrow, and into Tuesday, we will continue to have some rain and possibly some thunder showers just ahead of this front. But what we expect to happen with this tomorrow is this cold front is going to be so weak that it's going to actually disappear from our map tomorrow. And we'll continue to have rain, though, as a result of this low pressure. Then after that, 
This cold front is going to come through about Wednesday and clear out all of the rain, giving us nice partly cloudy skies for the end of the week, and our temperatures will be just a little bit cooler. Temperatures, however, for tonight are going to be in the lows. Uh, the low temperatures tonight are going to be in the 60s, the upper 60s, with high temperatures tomorrow in the low 80s. And our forecast for tonight is calling for a chance of showers and thunder showers with a low of 68 degrees, winds out of the south at 10 miles per hour. And uh, tomorrow's forecast again calls for thunder showers, a high in the low 80s, winds out of the south at 12 miles per hour. Now here's the five-day forecast for you. You see the thunder shower showing up on Monday and Tuesday. Wednesday will be clearing out with partly cloudy skies by the end of the week, mild temperatures throughout. For everyone that has to go to work tomorrow morning, we have a forecast for you. Thunder showers expected, temperature of about 70 and winds out of the south at 10 miles per hour. So the rain looks like it's cleared out for the most part by okay. the end of the week. Okay, Beverly, thank you. You know, in television and in movies, hospitals are often shown to be tragic places where loved ones sometimes die. Most adults going in for an operation know better, but many children don't. Because of that, a simple operation can become a traumatic event. But one woman is making a trip to the, to the operating room much easier for children. Often a child's understanding of a hospital consists of negative and frightening images. This traumatic association can hamper a child's recovery when they do need hospitalization. Most of the time, a child is not given specific information about what's going to happen to them, which some specialists feel only adds to their fears. Rosemary Traeger is the Director of Child Development at Orthopedic Hospital in Los Angeles, California. Her job is to work with children who are scheduled for surgery, helping to make the experience much less traumatic. I talk to them at their own age level about the surgery, explain where they're going to be going, where they fall asleep, how they fall asleep, where their parents are going to be when they wake up, where they'll be when they wake up, how they're going to feel, and different aspects of that. One of the things that I also do is with kids that have never been to surgery or are going to surgery for a pretty big procedure or are very scared and have been before, is I will go in greens all the way into surgery with the kids and I will stay with them until they're asleep. I don't try and emphasize the fact they will be having pain, but I do address that they may be uncomfortable or it may hurt after surgery. That way the parent will see that if we don't tell the child at all, or if we say that they won't have any pain, they really will be pretty angry at that parent after surgery. The response that I've seen is that the kids seem to bounce back better after surgery when they've had a better preparation or a complete preparation. It seems that they still are in pain because that's obvious from the surgery, but yet they're able to deal with it better. According to recent studies, Child development programs, such as the one at Orthopedic Hospital, are actually shortening the hospital stays for these children, as well as decreasing complications after surgery. This seems to happen because the children have an understanding of the experience of being hospitalized, and they're encouraged to openly discuss what they're most afraid of. They now feel more in control, and therefore are less afraid. I'm Dr. William Rader. When we return, the Lakers are one step away from the World Championship Series. Stan Saunders will have details next. Bud Davis Cadillac Inventory Reduction features 50 pre-owned 84 Sedan DeVilles, only 15,900, includes remaining warranty. Tomorrow's typewriter is at Business Equipment Center today, the new Sharprider typewriter. Simple to operate with a galaxy of features. Automatic correcting memory, lift-off type leaves no trace of errors. It has automatic centering and four typing pitches with proportional spacing. Sharprider even switches from regular type to bold type for emphasis. Sharp's new heavy-duty electronic typewriter, the best in features and price. Call Business Equipment Center for a demonstration in your office. Sizzling, hot, sassy, smart. Wow. It's Dillard's Summertime Sale. 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 Sublime Summertime. Panache and Splash. Catch while your look is on sale. 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 So stroll, roll, romance, dance. Your chance to really say begins herein and end only when Dillard's Summertime Sale fades away. There's something out of the ordinary going on here. Malls Barbecue Sauce, a unique blend of natural ingredients like the flavor of oranges, lemons, and raisins, exotic spices from around the world, even a touch of tamarinds from the West Indies. Just the way the Mall family has been making it for over 60 years. So you know something out of the ordinary is going on when the sauce is Malls. 
During the month of May, when you visit the Memphis Zoo, you can get a free brochure describing the animals which are native to Mexico. It also tells about Montezuma's legendary zoo. The brochure has been prepared in conjunction with Memphis in May activities by the docent division of the Memphis Zoological Society. Stan's going to tell us about the Lakers and everything there is to know about sports. Oh, we've got some exciting sports. Your yeah. Lakers won. Aren't you happy? Oh, I like the Lakers. Yeah, I like the Lakers, too. I think they'll go all the way. First of all, though, I'm sure many of you would agree there is nothing more exciting in the world of sports than a razor-sharp edge at the finish line or completion of any event. That followed a neck-and-neck -neck battle today, exactly the case at the Colonial Invitation in Fort Worth, Texas. We're headed into the 18th hole. Payne Stewart led Peter Jacobson by a single stroke with no one else even close. But Payne with a terrible tee shot over the river and through the woods, not to Grandma's house, but behind the clubhouse. Then on the second shot right here, a gamble that backfired, hitting a tree, dropping straight down. But the number three shot was the prayer that was answered from Never Never Land onto the green, 45 feet from the pin, in salvaging a boaty. As fate would have it, Peter Jacobson's birdie putt wasn't to be on this shot, so tighten your seatbelts. It's sudden death, first extra hole. Jacobson with a splendid approach right down the middle, Daddy. Stewart bogeyed while Jacobson birdied right here, earning 90000 thousand dollars with the win. Not bad at all. Canadian Barb Bumkowski sank seven birdies on the first nine holes en route to her first PGA win, LPGA that is, at the Chrysler Plymouth Charity Classic, Clifton, New Jersey. She had a 66 today to beat Muffin Spencer Devlin by four strokes. Marta Figueres Dati of Spain tied for third with Japan's Ayako Akamoto. Well, the breakers of New Orleans visiting the Tampa Bay Bandits today, USFL action. A battle between the old third place and first place respectively in the Southern Division. Out of his own end zone, quarterback John John Reeves to Eric Trevelyan with a little flea la flea curl right here to Arkansas product. Gary Anderson, and man, he thinks he's going all the way, but watch right there. He steps out of bounds, walking that tightrope, but he scored on three short runs with the help of this little ricochet right here off of Trevelyan into Spencer Jackson's hand. And I tell you, the Bandits 31-21, 31-20 victory today drops the Breakers three games behind Baltimore. Steve Young of the L.A. Express today with two touchdowns, including this 28-yarder to Freddie Scott and whipping the defending USFL champs Michigan 24-17. Then Jim Kelly right there who has thrown 31 passes, touchdown passes, that is, nearly 4,000 yards as it was uh, the Gamblers who are now in first place with a 31-12 victory today. USFL scoreboard for you. L.A. 24, Michigan 17. It's Oklahoma with five straight losses now. Tampa Bay has won seven straight in beating New Orleans 31-20 and San Antonio over Washington 30-14. So close, yet so far away. Those growing pains continue for the Memphis Showboats. Last night's 29-14 loss to Oakland on the road. Pretty heartbreaking, of course, but not without some game-breaking efforts. Like quarterback Walter Lewis right there. 38-yard scamper into the end zone. Then Walter's partner in crime, fellow rookie and receiver Derek Crawford. He's had Memphis in his blood since he was born here, prepped here, starred in college here. A new USFL record on the kickoff return there, 98 yards. Give me some skin, man, says Derek, as he gets on the bench. But... Late in the game, Walter went down on that tackle, seriously injuring the middle finger on his throwing hand. Walter says, hey, I'm fine, but Pepper says, not as fine as you think, as veteran Kenny Johnson may have to call the shots in the Liberty Bowl Friday night under the lights against the hottest team in the USFL, the Tampa Bay Bandits. The Los Angeles Lakers, who a week ago claimed they were tired, must have bathed in Geritol last night, showing no signs of fatigue today. L.A. is only one game from a shot at the title again. The L.A. fast break was in high gear the opening half. James Worthy to Byron Scott for a running two. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar turned passer to help the Laker attack. Bob McAdoo banks in two of his 23. Lakers by 11 at the intermission. L.A. seemed to put the game away in period three. Worthy on the scoring end this time. But the Suns also rise. Charles Pittman backs Jabbar up just enough to score. And Paul Westfall's fadeaway in the fourth quarter pulls Phoenix within four points. But well, the comeback ends there. Magic Johnson is too quick off the steal, gets a couple of his 20. Later, the Magic Man is too quick on the pass to Scott, who's wide open underneath. And with Kareem pumping in 31, the Lakers beat the Suns 126 to 115. This is Dan Lovett reporting.
Okay, Dan, baseball scores, National League, Atlanta 5, Pittsburgh 1, Chicago all over Houston, 10-3, Cincinnati lost to St. Louis by 1, L.A. by 1 over Montreal, 3-2, Philadelphia 7, Frisco 4, let's switch that, Philadelphia 7-4, a winner, of course, and the Mets over San Diego, 4-2 after 10. Let's go to the highlights on that. Top of the 7th now, it's tied at 2, Mets reliever Jesse Orozco led off right here with what should have been a routine fly ball, but outfielder Tony Gwynn finds the pill a little too hard to handle. Orozco turns on the juice all the way to third. Next man up, Kevin Chapman with the sacrifice fly, scoring Orozco as the Mets go on to record the win 4-2 in extra innings. Now to the American League scoreboard. It was the White Sox blanking Toronto. Three zip, same score between California and New York. Boston five, Minnesota four, Detroit over Oakland by one. Texas three, Kansas City two, Baltimore over Seattle five one. And it was Cleveland lifting Milwaukee 3-2. Southern League score, Memphis Chicks, Greenville Braves rained out. Well, burnout caught up with Raphael Rockpile Williams of Panama after he had a blazing sixth round. But in the seventh round, Hector Macho Camacho sent a blazing left that sent my man crushing to the ring. And I tell you, he was out of it for a while. Watch that left come up. It's coming to you. Coming, 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 coming. Boom. He goes back. And to the dislike of the crowd, Hector went and won that with a TKO in the seventh. He is now 24 and 0 with 14 knockouts. That's not bad at all. Not bad at all. One in other sports, note, Dan. Richard Petty won today in auto racing. Okay, You've got it. thank you very much, and we will be back in a minute.